Wow, welcome to church this morning. Another pretty nice day for November, late November. So, you know, we can't complain, right? Or can we? You could be in Florida, right? Okay, I'm sorry. All right. If you're glad to be in the house of the Lord, then raise your right hand. Now your left hand. And now you'll be getting our exercise in. All right. Good to be here today. Good to see you all. We'll go with our... Um, praise chorus. Get ready to stand. Oh, yes. I always forget that, don't I? <laughs> oh, she changed. That's different. When I call my fellows, you are tempest tossed. When you are discouraged, Welcome everyone to church this morning, and with the sun shining like that, we got to make the sun shine in here and let the Lord know we're here to praise Him. Al, this is my Father's world. Bye. 
Dear God, with your power, nothing is impossible. With spirit raised and hearts trusting, we are grateful for your promise that when two or more are gathered together, you are there among them. We thank you for the opportunity to gather in your holy presence once more. Oh Lord, we ask that you would bless our worship service today. We pray that you would help us to have a yearning heart and an open ear so that we may desire for your word. May you fill us with your wisdom to understand your will and after this worship service, may, we, may you help us to make us instruments for your greater purpose. And these things we ask in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And uh, again, if you haven't greeted someone new for a while, greet them. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hopefully I can read this okay. I don't have my glasses, but we'll see. <laughs> I got a pair here. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, today I'll be reading Psalms 23, verses 1 through 6 out of the King James Version. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He madeth me to lay down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yes, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will feel no evil, feel no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me. Thy preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And that concludes today's reading. Thank you, Becky. Good to see all of you here today. Welcome you this Lord's Day. Of course, this week... Uh, on Thursday, uh, the celebration of Thanksgiving and thankful for all that God has done and our services today certainly centering around the theme of Thanksgiving and uh, we're, we're glad you're here to share with us in that. Let me uh, thank those who came out this uh, past week and helped us uh, set up the decorations. We did it a week early, but kind of with the idea of helping people this weekend with so much going on. So uh, anyway, next week we'll uh, recognize the uh, the uh, hanging of the greens and then the following week we'll be entering into uh, uh, the Christmas season with the first Sunday of Advent so I uh, hope you remember those things invite others to come and be with you and we look forward to a good number of uh, people as we celebrate the birth of our Savior the Lord Jesus Christ so again thanks to those who helped us uh, do the decorations and set them up and I, I hope and pray that that, that will be a, a real blessing uh, to us as we celebrate this very, very special, wonderful time of the year. Um, we want to uh, take time just to remember our prayer needs and concerns. Uh, if you would remember those who are on the prayer list, um, I did get to see Sandy 
uh, crevice in this week, and I know she was going back for a, another CT scan, but uh, prayerfully over the uh, uh, the radiation that she's had to go through. So uh, you pray, continue to pray for her. Hazel Blankenship is uh, back from uh, Columbus uh, Hospital, where she was for several days. Um, and uh, I, I don't know for sure which nursing home she's in, but I think it's presidential. Anyone know that for sure? Okay, I believe that's correct. So pray for her. And then uh, Carol Clark is in uh, uh, Legacy Nursing Home, and she is uh, there um, recovering uh, from uh, five breaks in her pelvis. So that's, that's, a, pretty, that's a lot of breaks. Plus, a, uh, she found out she broke her tibia. Uh, in her leg as well. So you pray for Carol, and uh, I don't think she's been susceptible to these things, so that's been a kind of a surprise. So, so you, you uh, just pray for her, and I know if you can stop by and see her, uh, she would greatly uh, appreciate that. Uh, pray for all our prayer needs listed on here. I know uh, Carney is not here today. He, uh, um, I, well, I'm not even sure what happened, but anyway, cut his ear. I think he aimed high when he was shaving, but I'm not sure. But anyway, a pretty pretty good cut as far as it just it didn't want to stop bleeding. So he's okay now, but pray for him and for that to recover, we hope, okay. Uh, anyone else that we need to remember in prayer? All right, okay. Well, thank you for your, your prayers, your diligent prayers for these who are on our prayer list. We appreciate that uh, so, so very much. And we're going to sing our prayer course today. He is Lord. And we'll sing it through twice, second time through. If you have an unspoken request, and of course we welcome those who are listening uh, by way of Facebook today, uh, please raise your hands and we'll remember that as we go to the Lord in prayer. He is Lord. He is Lord. has risen from the dead and he is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. If you have a need, please raise your hand. He is Lord. He is Lord. Risen from the dead, and he is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for answered prayer. We think of those who are home from hospitals. We think of Tammy Chevalier and are thankful, Lord, she is back home. And pray you bless her in a very, very special way. So many others here, Lord, that uh, we bring before you today and many uplifted hands to share their, uh, our personal needs with you. And we're so glad, Lord, that you hear our prayer. And we pray to the great Lord above. We're thankful for your love for us, your care, and you're reaching down into our individual lives to touch us and mend us when we need that very thing. So Lord, today we're praying for a good day in thee. And we're praying that this day we would be thankful for all that you have done for us. Thankful for your goodness and your mercy. Thankful, Lord, that you love us so. So today we just rejoice together as a people, as a grateful people. And Lord, might we share that with others this week, that Lord, because of you, our lives are different because Jesus has interceded for us. So Lord, bless us today as we take this time in prayer. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, well, thank you again for being here. And I, I, probably, I probably messed up. I should have prayed for the Buckeyes in this coming game. But we'll, we'll leave that alone. <laughs> okay. Yes. All right. Well, let me remind you just a, uh, uh, a few things. Uh, Mitten Tree is, uh, is up, and a number uh, have uh, brought in 
uh, gloves and scarfs and, and uh, various things to give to, our, to the children at William Howard Taft uh, in Fair Park, and I'm so glad that we have that opportunity uh, to do that and be a part of that. So that'll be going out at the end of this month, I think. And then I'm going to ask uh, Pam and uh, is Juanita in here too? or There you are. Okay, if you guys want to come up and just talk to us. We, we've been working on our uh, shoe boxes for some time now, and uh, we'll just let them give the report a uh, good report. Okay. First of all, I want to thank everybody in our church that participated in donating, filling the boxes, praying. Anything you did for this ministry has been touched. And Juanita can kind of share how many we got done. <laughs> A lot. We had 206 boxes. That's going to go to 206 children that are uh, probably never even got a gift before in their life. And with each box, a child gets a Bible in their language and they get to learn about God in places where it's not, you know, where they can't access that. So they get a Bible. And it just, and there's been cases where people remember that and they come to God and they end up being ministers and teaching other people about God. So it's a blessing. It's a blessing. And here's some of the pictures. Can you imagine if I was telling Alan this morning, if all of our kids got was a shoe box full of a little bit of goodies, they would probably look at us like, really? <laughs> but look at the smiles on these kids' face. And, you know, missionaries go to different countries all over the world. We are doing a, a mission here, and we're being missionaries, and, and we have no idea how many different countries, how many kids that we uh, have touched hearts, how many kids that will get saved that would have never had an opportunity. And we live, in a, we live in a country where everybody has the opportunity, if they choose, to accept the Lord in their life. They also gave us some bookmarks. And it tells you in the back, you know, pray for these kids and stuff. We'll leave them out here on the table. And you guys, if you want to bookmark and pray for these children. And pray for the ones that are ministering to those kids. Because without somebody else taking another step. We took the step here in the United States. People in different countries are taking another step to touch these hearts of the kids. And I just want to thank everybody. I mean... Our whole church has done a lot this year. And, you know, with the shoe boxes, with the mitten ministry, also um, we talked about going Christmas caroling and doing things for our shut ins. And, you know, uh, we do the food uh, bank. We also help financially. Our church does a lot in our community. And now we're touching in a different country. So thank you, all of you, for everything that you've done. I was also I was also told that some of the shoe boxes are going to go to war torn areas. So. Yeah. Right. Thank you, ladies. Good report and uh, 206, and that uh, that also includes us uh, in the shipping costs. So so that was two thousand sixty dollars, right? Wow, my math worked this morning. It doesn't usually work. Anyway, that's a lot, uh, $10 to send a box, but uh, that takes them all around the world. And, and as Juanita said, some are going to uh, war-torn uh, places uh, uh, and uh, like Ukraine. And so uh, we're praying we can be a blessing to those who, who uh, have very, very, very little. And uh, even so many times in this country where we think of poverty, and there is poverty, uh, it's not eliminated. We all understand that. But so many times, uh, the very least in this country are blessed so many times more than in, in some other places. So uh, anyway, thanks for that, uh, for your help and your work. And, and along with that, uh, we're going to have, uh, at, at the conclusion of service, in the uh, first room, uh, coming out of the church on your right, 
there is our, we're going to be doing our donut sale supporting that uh, today and then that finalizes the cost of that. And uh, thanks for your help and your support and, and your love. And uh, you pray for those little children as they receive those boxes in, uh, in the month of December that, uh, that they truly get to hear about Jesus. And that's the main purpose behind this is just to, to reach into their lives and touch them. So, um, uh, so the, 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 on the 20th, the shoe boxes will be, deli- uh, well, have already been delivered, right? They're already there. So anyway, thankful for that. Uh, just a couple other quick things. No men's meeting uh, this month, and also the ladies' meeting is going to be suspended for this month. Is that correct? So no, no men's or ladies' uh, mission group meetings uh, at the end of this month, just with the busyness of the season. And then we wanted to add also December 3rd will be our annual business meeting. That's after at the end or conclusion of our regular services and you're invited to stay. And we keep the meeting short, uh, never longer than two hours. And uh, no, 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 just hopefully 15, 20 minutes is all. So but anyway, I hope you can stay for that as we uh, discuss. Um, uh, and also it's, it's election time for our uh, officers and so the slate will be presented at that time so again thank you for all you've done uh, very very much appreciated uh, want to remember remind also the food pantry and uh, again we've had opportunity to help several lately with that and we're thankful for that so uh, continue to uh, to support that if you can we greatly greatly appreciate it I know this time of year so much to do so many things uh, that that uh, requires funds from us, but uh, God blesses us when we go that extra mile and do those special things for these who are in need. Uh, uh, Doug put in the bulletin: "The generous will themselves be blessed, for they shall share their food with the poor." Proverbs 22 verse 9. So you remember that and do what you can, and we appreciate that so so uh, very much. Uh, at this time, we're going to ask our ushers as they prepare themselves to come for our uh, tithes and offerings. Uh, Thankful for your giving again to Fair Park Community Baptist Church. Let me just say God is blessed this year. Financially, we are stable. We are uh, maintaining ourselves uh, and and with all the projects and things that just crop up, come up, I'm amazed and uh, God is good and we're thankful for that. Uh, Ushers. today we thank you for loving us and we are thankful that you have blessed us in ways that we can share the ministry of Jesus with others and so we pray today that our love grows that our hearts
just enlarge themselves that we might do more for your cause. Thank you, Lord, for meeting with us today and for this day that we have. We ask that you bless both the giver and the gift alike. And we ask this in the blessed name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Please remain standing and we are going to sing, We Gather Together. Did I say sang? We're going to sing. After we're done, then we sang it, right? I okay, think that's how that goes. Right. Okay. We can do it no matter what. <laughs> Thank you for your good singing today. Today it is our privilege to have Brother Ron Sanderson come sing for us, and we're glad that he can. Good morning. My famous um, pianist asked me to say a couple words. Being a preacher, that's impossible. But I'll say a couple words to give him time to get his instrument in tune. I chose this song um, to go along with the scripture. Um, so it's entitled, um, Led by the Master's Hand. And um, I, I like all kinds of music except one or two, because my favorite rock group is found in Mount Everest. I mean Mount Rushmore, rather. I got it the wrong place. So listen as... Uh, we okay? Sure. <laughs> I pay him a lot of money, and I got to make sure I get what I pay for. Okay, Pastor. As I walk the road of life, my feet grow weary, and I stumble through the thorns and sifting sand. But I never have a fear about tomorrow, for 
I'm led by the Master's hand Through the storm, through the night I'll keep holding on With His hand holding mine Hope is never gone when I climb the last mile to heaven's land, I'll be led by the Master's hand. Through the valley of despair, though I may wander, on the highest mountain top I see shall stand And I'll never walk alone For my heart tells me I'll be led by the Master's hand through the storm, through the night, I'll keep holding on. With his hand holding mine, hope is never gone. When I climb the last mile to heaven's land, I'll be led by the Master's hand Through the storms, through the night I'll keep holding on With His hand holding mine Hope is never gone when I climb the last mile to heaven's land, I'll be led by the Master's hand. When I climb the last mile to heaven's land, be led by the Master's Thank you, Brother Ron. You didn't get your money's worth today, I don't think, but anyway. <laughs> All right, well, we're glad you're here, and I, I am glad we are here this Thanksgiving weekend. And uh, just a lot of things to rejoice in. I put up here a quote by Billy Graham, and I like it. God's grace, quite simply is God's mercy and goodness toward us. And that's the truth. God is good in all that He does, but especially in how He deals with us. The book of Psalm, chapter 23, I know you know it. It's a, a very, uh, probably one of the best known passages that's found in the Word of God. So oftentimes I use it when we come to a time of of, uh, of a funeral and, and we're conducting with those who we love and, and have passed on and just to remind us of the shepherd's care for that soul for us. And I wanted to share with you today out of this uh, beautiful passage, David being the, uh, the human author and of course the Holy Spirit guiding the pen and hand of, of David the king as he was just a lad, just a small uh, child as he wrote these things out in the, in the uh, uh, desert regions taking care of his dad's sheep. 
And uh, I think we all look back, at least most of us our age, of, of times where we used to do chores, didn't we? Do you remember chores? I don't think that's permitted anymore. That's kind of like spanking. I don't think you're allowed to, to give chores out anymore. Well, David had that responsibility of, of taking care of, of the sheep. And he had it in a land where there were wild animals and the wild animals get hungry and they look for sheep as, as pretty tasty uh, food. And so David slayed at one time a bear, at another time a lion. And finally, that was good practice for him because he had the, the uh, ability and agility and God guided his slingshot and he slew Goliath. And so David writes these words one day as he's sitting there taking care of his sheep. And he says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And I think it's always a joy to come to this time of year because we get to offer thanksgiving. We get to be grateful. I think of uh, John and Janet Anspaugh just uh, a week ago in an in a accident and Deer were involved, and, and they are sitting here in church today, and I praise the Lord that they're here. And we know that God is good. God is great, gracious to us. And it gives us that opportunity to rejoice in what God has done, but also to rejoice in what God is going to do. Have you ever thought about that? We, we look back and we can say, yes, God was here. God was in this moment of my life. God did these things. And thankfully, he blessed in those things. But to realize that continues on. I think it's a good positive time for us to reflect on family and, and, and think about friends that you have been blessed to have in your life. And I truly count all of you more than friends. I count you family. In the book of Exodus chapter 34 and verse number 6, the scripture says, And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God. And, and it's so specific there in, in describing who he is. The Lord, the Lord God. Merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. And that very thought so explained there to, to Joshua all those years ago. And we're reminded that God is good. You travel over into the New Testament and then you find Paul there. And he is stating, and I think he does it so triumphantly in 2 Corinthians 4. For all things are for your sake. Now we look around us and we see the war in Ukraine and we see the, the ugliness of, of hatred in the land surrounding Israel. And we see those things that happen, but we forget that all these things are but movers and shakers in God's eternal plan. And Paul says, for all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound or, or abundantly abound, it says, to the glory of God. God is working in things that we sometimes look and think, well, this seems strange, this doesn't seem right, this even seems evil. But behind the scenes, God is moving and directing and forcing the course of history. And it will come out just as the word of God says. And the book of Revelation. Much of it now even being uh, I think revealed to us. One day will be so clear as we stand on the other side. You see the truth is proclaimed again and again and again in the word of God. It's assurance that the Lord who loves us and gave himself for us certainly bears, and we might say it this way, the personality of goodness and grace. If goodness and grace were, were, was a person who came walking through here, we would see it in that purpose and reflection of who Jesus Christ is. So this morning I want to share with you for just a little while about God's goodness, about His mercy, and I want you to reflect on that this week as you come to a time of giving thanks of being thankful for what God has done for you. 
And I think I just really wanted to share out of these verses just a few thoughts, and we'll try not to linger long. I started out with that very first thought that, that Jesus Christ is our shepherd. He's the one that we look to. He's the one we hope to see. He's the one who delivers us from evil. But I find in David's life, and by the way, when David penned these words, remember he was a shepherd boy. A lot of innocence in life, a lot of things not yet seen, but he's already dealing with the wild animals of the country. He's facing them. There comes a time in his life where he fails in his life. He's king. He's achieved a high seat in the government of, of Israel. And he fails in his life. And in Psalm 51 verse 11, David says, Cast me not away from thy presence. And take not thy Holy Spirit from me. David was wounded when he realized the wrong that he had done. The, the sin that he had committed. And there is an intimacy in that penitent cry of David. It's spoken from his broken heart. There are times when we as children of God fail in our lives. We're not moving forward like we should. We're not producing as believers in Jesus Christ, we slip back into the gutter of sin. And David knew he had sinned and that he needed the closeness of fellowship restored with his God. And, and David mourned. He wept because that separation had occurred and he recognized his need to draw closer to his Lord. I think we all go through our lives and we find sometimes we get off the path of righteousness. We, we linger in the land of sin. We love the things we should not love. And so it was even with David, a man who it is written in the Word of God, a man whose heart was after God. In his guidance that the Lord God provides for us, he talks about the Holy Spirit. He says, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. And I'm so glad that we know in the New Testament and understand when the Holy Spirit is put upon us as Christians, we are sealed by the Holy Spirit. It is a protective seal. I was sharing with uh, Brenda a little bit ago about, uh, as she told me about her father's uh, cut on his ear. And I, I said, have you heard of liquid bandage? I don't know if you've heard of it. It's it, it pretty much, I think it's super glue. It's what it smells like when you open it up. But anyway, you put it on a, a cut and, and, and it seals it up. Well, the Holy Spirit seals our lives. He protects us. And in the guidance of, of the Lord God that He provides for us, the Holy Spirit does some very specific things. And let me tell you why the Holy Spirit is given to us. Number one, He is our spiritual guide. He's helping us through our journey on our, on our, on our life's uh, way. He warns us when we've drifted from the sweet presence of God, when we feel that prick in our heart that that, that isn't right, we're not doing right. It's the Holy Spirit doing that with us. And it's also true that He's directing our soul in paths of righteousness. So our life is so involved with what God does for us, and we understand that the Lord is our shepherd. And then I want you to see this today when we think about the goodness of God and His mercy. God says we can gain fulfillment in our life. Now I remember the word fulfillment because my mother uh, for some years worked for the company that used to be here in Marion called Fulfillment. I don't know if you remember or not. Uh, they used to type uh, uh, letters and, 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 and responses. They worked for Kellogg's for, for quite a while. And, and in that uh, period of time, I know that, that uh, anyway, mom would type numerous things for somebody to get a dime back from, uh, <laughs> from Kellogg's is what I think the whole deal was about. But anyway, she, she, she worked for them for a while. And that word fulfillment is a word that we sometimes fail to recognize in our lives. Here's what David says. The Lord is my shepherd. And right after that, after that significant statement, he says, I shall not want. Now, we're talking about being satisfied. We're talking about being 
completely content with what we have. You see, satisfaction often eludes us. We become consumed with what we think we need rather than what we already have. And all of us are prone to looking around the next bend to see what is available rather than looking up and realizing our Heavenly Father has supplied our need. We already possess so much. God has been so good to us. I think of the children of Israel as they were uh, moving out of that, that terrible land of Egypt. They're in the, uh, the, the land called the wilderness, and their journey towards, towards Israel has begun, but they begin to grumble about what they have. They begin to think about what what they're possessing, and they're thinking, man, we used, to, we used to have the lentils and the good things in the land of Egypt, and they forgot that God was supplying their journey, their traveling. Number two, our Lord provides for our needs. And I think when we really get down to the brass tacks of life, when you look at verse two, you understand something about what God is doing and how he is doing it, it says this, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Now, I heard someone say, and I like this, this is called believing rest. It's understanding who's guiding our steps. It's knowing that God's in control and that even though we're not quite where we think we ought to be, we know we're going to get there because of who's leading our life. That's believing rest. And we shouldn't miss what God has already done. Think about this. He's given us our salvation. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. And we know that our connection to Him is through Jesus Christ. When we trust in Him as our Savior and turn our sins over and let Him wash them away. That's salvation. Secondly, we know we have security, that we are safe in the Father's hand, that He's got a hold of our life, and that we can live our lives knowing that God's in control. And then I think the third thing is sustenance, knowing that the day-to-day -day needs of our life will be fulfilled. Here Jesus proclaims in His Word that we need to settle in what we have. Now I have a little dog at home, uh, Sadie. Sadie's a little chihuahua. And I've had Sadie for a long time. And uh, anyway, she, uh, she becomes quite content to jump on my lap or on Susie's lap. And, and especially if one of us have a blanket, she loves to get up under that blanket and hide. It's just contented. And she'll lay like that until one of us think, i got to get up. I need to move. I can't sit in this chair any longer. That's contentedness. And I think that's what God wants us to understand we should have in Him. We should trust Him. And so He supplies our needs. He takes care of what we need day by day. Sometimes we'll look up down the road a little ways and say, well, I don't have this at this time. I'm not sure I'm going to have it when I get there. Just trust God. Trust Him for what He will do for you. Number, number four, let me share this with you. Our Lord strengthens us. It says here, He restores my soul. You ever get to where your soul is just a little beaten up? Where you feel like you're, you're struggling with life, like things aren't fair? Why is this happening? Why has this become a problem in my life? And I love verse 3 because it reminds us God's going to get us back on track. He's going to get those things right for us. It says, He restoreth my soul. And to understand that, we understand that we sometimes drift away from the purpose of, and plan of God. We begin to lose sight of, of God's goodness and of God's mercy and grace. And, and when you think about that, it's that understanding that He draws us back to where we need to be. I've shared this with you before, and I'll share it again, I'm sure. But Jesus, I, I love when He met that Samaritan woman at the well. And the amazing thing about the Samaritan woman was she was not, she was considered a half-Jew. And I say that 
with no ill intent, but, but she wasn't a full-blooded Jew. There was some Gentile in her blood. And the Samaritans were looked down upon by the Jewish people and were considered just not as good as we are. And understanding that Jesus made a special trip to go see that woman at the well, that Samaritan woman, and to share with her of water from which she would never thirst again. I want you to think about how Jesus supplies for us. It doesn't matter our station in life, where we're at, what's happening to us. It's the reminder that He has exactly what we need. He's going to restore our soul. Then see this with me. He directs us how to live godly lives. In, 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 uh, in verse number 3, it says, He leads me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. I like what it says in Psalm chapter 4, a little bit earlier in the book of Psalms. It says, Hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. Thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. When things get tough, we have to understand God's still working. When we look at the solution and it doesn't seem right, God's still working. I think of Job in the Old Testament and his life and, and how so much disappointment happened to Job. And I, I think even his own children were taken from him. His, his livelihood was destroyed. The things that we would count as good marks in life was all ripped away. And even his wife said to him, and when your wife turns on you, you're in trouble, right? <laughs> his wife says, why don't you just go ahead and curse God and die? And that was the, the helplessness of the situation Job was in. But in all of that, here's what we learn when we cry to God, the God of our righteousness, thou hast, thou will enlarge me. That means increase me. That means give what I need for that very moment. And then David says in that same word, hear my prayer. Folks, when we get down and all we can do is fall to our knees, that's when the Lord wants us to start praying. That's when he expects us to turn to him. I love what it says down in verse 5. You prepare us to table before me in the presence of mine enemies. That's where Job finally got in his life. He wasn't there for a while. But David says, you anoint my head with oil and my cup runneth over. A beautiful blessed truth there. And I wish I had more time to share that with you about the anointing of the head. But let me just say, that's the blessing of God in spite of when we get in the worst places of life. And then I want you to consider this with me today. God is always with me. Have you ever thought about that? Verse 4, David said, For thou art with me. Now, sometimes we go through life and we get hit with some pretty rough things. It deals a blow to our hearts and to our souls. We are wounded. We become weak. We struggle in those moments. But to realize in spite of that, God is with you. Is there anything more blessed in, in, in the word of comfort than knowing that he is present? I love the story of a, of a lady who was a wife of a missionary in Bombay, India. And she was dying. She wasn't going to survive. And a friend was talking to her and trying to offer some hope and consolation. And she said to her that, I, I hope the Savior will be with you as you walk through the dark valley of the shadow of death. And her response to that is so enlightening and so uplifting. Here's what she said. If this is the dark valley of the shadow of death, why, there's not a dark spot in it. All is light. You see, the difference is when you realize Jesus is with you, the darkness isn't such a bad thing because God is going to get you through it and get you to where you need to be in the darkness. Jesus is there. And then, really, the crux of what I wanted to share with you, the last couple thoughts. God is good. Surely, goodness there, David says in verse 6, 
and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I heard the story told by a pastor, Brooks, many years ago, who told the story of, about some who were in a dark part of, of the world. And anyway, he had a gift that someone to give to him that he gave to these people. It was a sundial. Well, Susie and I were on our honeymoon and it was down in Florida. We went to uh, the Bach Gardens, which is uh, in the middle part of, uh, of, uh, of, of uh, Florida. And anyway, went there and there is a sundial on the side of this big tower, uh, which uh, is the largest Carolina, I understand, in the world. Uh, but, but anyway, but the sundial always true, the sun always hits it, and you see what time of day it is as the sun is displayed on the side of that tower. And when these people got this gift, they thought, this is amazing. Look what it does, how the sun just reveals, uh, you know, what time of day it is, and, and, and it's just so amazing. So you know what they did? <laughs> they built a room and covered it with a roof. <laughs> And I, I think there's some value in that lesson because sometimes we, we want to we set things aside. We hide it in our hearts and we forget that, that God is in our life. We need to let the sun shine in as the old children's song says. We need to understand that faith is what inspires us to do good things in life. And sometimes we're guilty of covering the sundial, of blocking what God is sharing and doing for us. God is good. And you see, goodness is a character trait. And that enlarges in itself so many other parts of our life. Romans 8, 28, my favorite verse. All things. And i got to stop and remind myself of that once in a while. All things work together for good. And, and listen for who? All things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. He's talking about believers, children who are trusting in God. And goodness is that character trait that, that enlarges itself as we get in the worst situations in life and God blesses and abundantly supplies our need. Not only is God good, but let me close by saying God is merciful. You see, the goodness and mercy, they're, they're almost the same, but just a little different. And the truth is, you can't be good without mercy in your life, and you can't be merciful unless there is goodness in your life. And I think King David understood that. He understood how much mercy he needed in his life. He had made a lot of bad decisions, David had. He was human, just like you and me. And, and in some ways, he sinned more severely. He was guilty of adultery. He was guilty of murder. But in all those things, he come to understand that God is goodness and gracious and merciful to us and extends his love. And then, in verse 6, God rewards them that follow him. It says, and this is the conclusion of this great, amazing, small chapter, that this, this psalm that seals so much in our lives. It says, he dwell, we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And that's the blessed contentedness that we find through knowing the Lord is our Savior. You see, the ultimate joy for every Christian is that one day we will be in the presence of the Lord. But I want you to think about this for a minute. While we think about that day when that happens, we also understand that we are currently in the presence of the Lord. In the Word of God, it says, where two or three are gathered together, there I will be also. God's here in our midst today. And to understand that one day we will be at home with Him, we will physically, visually see Him. Today we feel His presence. But, oh, friends, 
when you are saved and trust in Jesus as Savior, that's going to last for all eternity. You see, God loves you that much. Unfortunately, I think sometimes Christians look at God like a spare tire. A spare tire is put in the back of your car, forgotten for months at a time until suddenly a tire goes flat on your vehicle and you have a flat on the road and you stop and you go back and you throw open your trunk and you hope that your spare tire is in good condition, right? And you pull it out and you put it on and go, oh good, it works. Sometimes that's what we do with God. We keep him in the trunk of our lives and we forget that he's there all the time. Not just when emergencies happen, but all the time. I hope we understand that, that what we have as believers is because God loves us so. You see, when we think about mercy, mercy is the act of, of, of withholding deserved punishment. We all deserve a place called hell. We all deserve to be punished there for our wickedness against Him. But yet, in His grace, God gives us a gift we do not deserve. He's going to give us heaven. And all oh, my friends, when I look at Psalm 23, I see the, the fruition of thanksgiving of learning that God cares and loves for us and that our needs are met. Philippians 4, verse 19, all my needs are met in Him. He supplies all my needs. That's how much God loves you. We're going to stand and sing uh, for just a couple of minutes. Page 519 in the songbook. We'll also have the words here. Great is thy faithfulness. Maybe today someone just needs to come forward and say, Lord, thank you for what you have done for me. Thank you for loving me. Maybe someone today needs to acknowledge Jesus Christ as Savior and you need to give your heart to him. Maybe someone just needs to join in fellowship here at this church that believes Jesus is our Savior and our Lord. We're going to sing this verse, uh, verses 1 and 2. Of great is thy faithfulness. Ruth Ella, would you come and lead us, please? Please stand.
came to God's house to, uh, and I hope you go away just rejoicing in Him, thankful for what God has done, for what He's doing, and that uh, His blessings continue on. So uh, this Thanksgiving, be thankful. Uh, Brenda? Okay, okay, okay. Brenda wants to meet with uh, with those who have been in the choir real quickly. Uh, take just a couple minutes. Also, remind you as you're making your way out of here, uh, uh, the uh, just past the entrance and the next door Sunday school room, there is uh, some uh, coffee, donuts, juice, uh, and uh, just uh, just a way to uh, to be thankful today. And so, I hope you'll stop there and and. Uh, uh, a small donation will, uh, again, help uh, uh, us in that uh, project, the great project that has been accomplished. And so we're thankful that we have, uh, we have that to do. So uh, as we go from here, let's pray that God blesses, uses us, and mightily we go forward for the cause of Christ. Uh, Brother Al Gruber, would you dismiss us in prayer, sir?